Hello, my charmed ones, and welcome to this on-demand workshop for the productivity assessment. My name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet, and I help ambitious women create the master plan for their balanced and successful lives and businesses. And today I'm going to walk you through an amazing resource that I created to help you identify the root cause of your productivity and planning issues. So if you are someone who feels like they struggle with planning and productivity and time management, and especially if maybe you've watched a lot of videos or read some books on the topic, but you haven't really been able to make any significant or lasting shifts with your productivity, then you are in the right place. So I created the productivity assessment several years ago at this point, after working with hundreds of women from within my community who thought that they were doing the right things to get their time and task under control, but they didn't see their effort paying off. And the big reason for this that I uncovered through working with them was that they thought their productivity issue was one thing, but it actually turned out to be something else altogether. So they were trying to fix an area of their productivity, but the solutions and strategies that they were using weren't the right ones. They weren't hitting at the cause of the productivity struggle, so not much was changing for them. And so I was inspired. I thought, Alexis, if only you could create something, some test, let's say, that women in your community could take to really help them find out what the root cause of their productivity problems were. Well, that would be amazing. You could give it out to everyone in your community for free, and then they could gain true self-awareness and understand what's going on with them. And then with the right answers, they could make true and lasting change. And this is how the productivity assessment was born. So let's jump into the workshop today and get started because I'm creating this as an on-demand training on purpose, right? To keep the workshop itself as brief as possible so that you get what you need and you can start taking action as soon as possible. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here is the productivity assessment hosted by yours truly, Alexis, also known as Ms. Trenchcoat all across the internet. Right now, real quick, go ahead, give this video a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and go find me on Instagram and give me a follow. I'm at Ms. Trenchcoat, and that way you'll be able to quickly DM me if you have any questions about the productivity assessment, and I may be able to get back to you quicker than if you're using the comments or perhaps email. Okay, so first I want to start off with what my purpose and intention is for sitting here and doing this training with you. I want you to walk away from this assessment with a clear understanding of the core productivity competencies that you want to improve on and a plan for you to get started. Okay, so there are so many different ways and tests, right, to assess yourself, but I've never actually found like a comprehensive test for productivity. So I decided to create one. Now, this assessment is based on self-reporting. So you aren't being compared to anyone else or any arbitrary standard that I've created around productivity that doesn't really exist, right? This is really about you understanding yourself, your patterns, um, your default mode for productivity. This assessment is comprised of 50 questions with 10 questions for each of five categories of productivity. And those five categories are planning, time management, boundaries, confidence, and energy. So this assessment will measure your development across seven core productivity competencies. And I'll explain more about those when we get to actually scoring your assessment. Now, the questions themselves are meant to be answered with a simple agree or disagree. Don't overthink these questions. You either generally believe the statement to be true most of the time or not. And this is a really great point for me to point out that you actually have a free workbook that goes along with this training. So go ahead and check the link down below wherever you're watching this um, in the description or down below the video, because I know I'm going to be putting this video in a few different places. There will be a link for you to either download the workbook or sign up to get it. Whatever it is, it's free. 
I highly recommend that you download that so that you can follow along. This is actually going to have all the questions laid out and it's going to help you with the scoring rubric, all of that later. So that will definitely be really handy for you to have. So make sure you go get that. Feel free to pause this video right now if you don't have it. Okay, so let's talk really quickly about how to actually answer the questions. So like I said, the questions of this assessment are intended to be answered with a simple agree or disagree. So agree is the affirmative answer, right? It's yes, it's true, meaning that you believe the statement applies to you most of the time, okay? And disagree is the negative answer. It's the no, it's the false, right? Meaning that you do not believe that the statement applies to you most of the time. Now, we are not looking for perfect answers here, right? No one does all of these things and all of these statements that I'm going to present you with perfectly 100% of the time, which is why I want you to just focus on what feels like your normal most of the time or more of the time than not. So if there's something that you see and it's like, let's say it's something you do four days a week, but you don't do it seven days a week, that's fine, right? Four days a week is more than half, right? So you're doing the thing. It could be an agree statement, right? Because you're doing it most of the time. So that is how you are going to answer this. It's just a yes or no, agree, disagree, true, false, right? However you want to think about it as you're answering the questions, that is how we actually score this, okay? Now, a little disclaimer before we get into the questions. This philosophy is still a work in progress, but it works if you do the work. Meaning that, as I told you before, I created this, right? I created the productivity assessment by myself using my own information and resources and research and all that jazz, right? So it's something that I came up with. I didn't get it somewhere else. And so it's still relatively new and it's still a, um, a, a philosophy and a viewpoint and a process that I'm still always working on improving. So if you go through this assessment and something is doesn't seem quite right, don't worry about it, right? There might be a few little imperfections here and there with the questions or things like that. But just know that if you show up, right, to answer the questions as honestly as you can, in, in good faith, we would say, right? Don't overthink things. Don't micromanage, right? And don't like be too critical of the questions, right? Just answer them honestly, then you've shown up to do the work and therefore the productivity assessment is going to work for you. Okay, so now let's go ahead and jump in with the assessment. So the first set of questions I said that we're going to ask you are planning related, which is all about making successful plans and executing on them. So there are 10 questions for planning and for each of the categories. I'm going to give you five at a time to focus on screen. Um, but of course, if you have your workbook, use that. They're going to be all listed out and it's an easy way for you to keep track of your answers. You're going to notice something as well. All of these questions are have a letter and a number. So the letter is actually in reference to the first letter of the category. So P here is for planning. And then they're numbered one through 10. Again, that's just to help keep us uniform through this whole process from answering the questions to scoring the rubric, etc. Okay, so here we go. Here's our planning questions. P1, I have and use a paper or digital planner on a regular basis. So do you have a planner and you use it sometimes or most of the time? Agree? If not, it's a disagree, okay? Pretty straightforward. P2, I record my tasks inside my planner. So if you have a planner and you use it, so you said agree maybe to the first question, do you use that, that planner for your tasks? Right, that's what you write in there, things you need to do. Agree or disagree? P3, I record my scheduled appointments inside my planner. So do you use your planner to actually keep track of things that have like a specific date and time that you have to go do them, like a, like a meeting or a doctor's appointment, things like that? Do you record appointments in your planner? Agree or disagree? Yes, no, true or false, okay? P4, I keep track of key information in my planner so I don't forget it. And more often than not, having that reminder in my planner helps me. So this is just asking, I keep things that are important that I need to remember in my planner and I use that information, right? It helps me to remember. Basically, does your planner help you to remember things, right? True, false, yes, no, affirmative, negative, agree, disagree, right? However you want to think about this. And P5, I record my personal goals and projects inside my planner. So do you have your 
personal goals for the year in your planner listed out or broken out somewhere? And do you keep like project plans inside of your planner? Anything to kind of keep track of the objectives you're going after? Yes, no, affirmative, negative, agree, disagree, true, false, you know? Okay, that's P5. P6, when I record things in my planner, I tend to get them done. Again, more times than not. P7, I feel confident that I know how to use my planner to keep me organized and on track. Is that the way you feel most of the time? Agree or disagree? P8, I only occasionally miss tasks or appointments, and I rarely miss anything of high importance. Here, so here we're saying, I only occasionally miss things, right? When I'm using my planner, right? And I really don't often miss anything that's really major. I, I'm able to use my planner to get the big things done, the important things done. Is that yes most of the time or a no? Agree or disagree? So P9, when I look at my planner, I can clearly see what the next important action is for me to take, right? So in your planner, you're working on something, you get something done, you can look at your planner. Do you, does your planner clearly tell you what the next thing to work on is? Agree or disagree? Yes, no. Okay. And P10, I have a reliable routine in place for planning my days, weeks, and months. So do you have a reliable, regular planning routine that you use most of the time? It doesn't mean that every single day you're in your planner planning for like 15 to 20 minutes. Just means that most of the time you do have a reliable routine that you use to check your planner and to make your plans. Okay. That's planning. Next, the time management questions. And this is about utilizing strategy to effectively manage your time. And of course, I want to remind you here that if at any point you want to pause, you can absolutely pause this video, right? And review the questions if you need to think about them. I realize I'm moving through this pretty quick. And I do generally want you to give an, a good first impression of what you're thinking, right? I don't want you to think too deeply because when we overanalyze, we can really dig ourselves into a hole. But if you do need more time for any of these questions, feel free to pause at any, at any point and you can press play and we will resume, okay? So time management questions, utilizing strategy to effectively manage your time. So again, T here for time management. T1, I feel like I'm a good manager of my time and I use my time to the best of my ability, to the best of your ability, okay? Not some arbitrary standard or not what you see your sister-in-law or mother or your cousin doing or some girl you follow on the internet, <laughs> the best of your ability. Okay, agree or disagree. T2, I know and execute on strategies to help me manage a large task load, right? So when you have that large to-do list, do you know and use strategies that help you get more of those things done quicker to help you organize and execute on them? T3, I get the most important tasks done each day, even if I can't complete everything on my list. One of my favorite little phrases that I often share with you guys is there's often more to do in a day than time to get it done, right? But as long as we're getting the important things done, that's the most important thing, right? So is that an agree or a disagree for you? T4, I have a clear method for prioritizing tasks and appointments so that important items are always completed in a timely manner. Right, so that you use and you execute on prioritization, really, to make sure that you're making time for the most important appointments and the most important tasks in your day. Agree or disagree? T5, I understand how to batch my work and do so as often as is necessary. Necessary, right? Not that you do it all the time. It's when the situation calls for it. Okay, that's T5, agree or disagree. T6, I am good at estimating the time it will take me to complete tasks most of the time, right? You're a good estimator of how long it'll take you. If you say, okay, I've got this task on my list, I think it'll take me 15 minutes. You're generally a good estimator, right? Not that you, you know, you say it'll take 20 minutes and it took 20 minutes exactly, or it took 19 minutes and 12 seconds, right? But generally, when you are portioning out time for tasks, are you someone who's able to portion enough, right? Not, not far too 
little time and not far too much time, right? It's about right, right? Is that an agree or a disagree? T7, I am good at setting reasonable expectations for the amount of work I can complete in a day. Do you feel like you start your day with a list that's way too long all the time? Or do you feel like you set expectations reasonably so that the things you put on your to-do list, you feel pretty confident you'll have the time to get them done, barring any sort of external influence or emergency that might pop up, right? We're talking about on a regular basis, more times than not, okay? T8, I am rarely in a position where I need to quickly complete work on past due priority tasks that have been missed. So this is about how often are you really having to go back and work on things that you should have done last week or last month, right? Is that something that's a situation where you've only missed some, you only miss things every once in a while, or you feel like you're constantly working from behind. You're constantly working on things that should have been done last week, last month, etc. Agree or disagree? T9, I am usually working on tasks and complete them before their due date. So if there are tasks that have like a specific due date, do you get them done by their due date generally? Yes or no? Agree or disagree? And T10, I have high expectations of myself that I often meet. So what are your expectations of yourself? If you're saying I have high expectations and I don't meet them, that's a disagree. Or you could say, I don't have high expectations for myself at all, right? Then, again, that would be a dis disagree as well. Okay, that's the end of time management. Next, we're on to boundaries. So protecting your ability to be productive so you can get things done. So in boundaries, B1, I am good at dealing with interruptions in my workday. Agree or disagree? B2, I am open to helping others and rarely feel like I'm being asked for too much. Agree or disagree, right? So are you someone who, you know, especially at work or at home, in your day-to-day -day life, you're willing to help other people, and but you feel like you do a good job of setting a boundary so they're not asking you for too much all the time, right? Is it agree or is it a disagree? B3, I am not easily distracted. Hmm? Is that an agree or a disagree? <laughs> B4, when I schedule time to work on something, I use that time wisely. Again, so this is kind of talking about like if you're time blocking or something like that, you set time aside for something. I'm going to work on this at this time. Do you show up to do the work at that time you say and use your time wisely? Or do you putter around and avoid the work or push the work off? Is it an agree or a disagree? Okay, B5, when new tasks pop up throughout my day, I have a clear method for tracking them so that they don't interrupt my current work. So if you get a lot of interruptions or new tasks added to your list throughout the day, you know, we all, you know, hopefully we're starting the day with some sort of plan, right? But then what do you do when new tasks pop up? Do you have a way of integrating them so that you're not losing focus of your plan unless the situation calls for it? Again, if some emergency thing comes up and that does need to have your attention, that's absolutely fine. But we're talking about when just like normal tasks are coming in, do you have a method for integrating them into your existing plan so that you're not having to throw your existing plan out the window? Okay, is that an agree or a disagree? Yes, no, true, false. Okay. B6, I'm able to manage new urgent priority tasks without disregarding my existing workload. So when these new priority things do come in that maybe do need to have your attention, can you manage them and then also still make sure that you get, I'm not saying you're going to have the time to get your full task list done, but are you still able to bring your attention back to that point of your task list to get the other things you said you were important as well, get some of those items done as well. B7. I plan buffer time into my day so that I can handle unexpected tasks while successfully completing my own workload. So do you plan what I call white space or buffer time, time where there's nothing scheduled, right? So in case you get some extra tasks that are important, you can fit those in without disrupting other plans, right? 
do you do that? Or do you schedule every hour, every half hour, every 15 minutes of your day packed with tasks so that if something comes in that's an emergency, it then creates that domino effect of it pushes the next thing off and the next thing off and the next thing off and then a whole bunch of stuff falls off your to-do list. Okay, is that an agree or a disagree, yes or no? B8, when I'm at work, I don't feel like I waste much time and rarely question where my time has gone. So do you feel like you're efficient with your time, that you spend your work time on work things and at the end of the day, you're saying, okay, yeah, I can, I totally know what I did today. Like I, I spent my time wisely today. Or do you look back and go, what did I do today? How did eight hours pass, right? Is that an agree or a disagree? B9, I am able to gracefully set boundaries with people who do come to me and ask for too much. So if someone is asking you for help that maybe shouldn't be, or someone's asking you for something way beyond what you should be giving them, right? Do you have the capacity to gracefully set boundaries with them, right? And send them on their way. Or are you someone who no matter what they drop on your lap, you, you take it, right? You take it and you work on it, even if it's inappropriate for them to be giving it to you, even if it's way too big of a task for you to be handling on your own, you just take it. Is that an agree or a disagree? And B10, when I make a plan for my day, my day often follows closely to that plan. Doesn't follow exactly because no one has a crystal ball to be able to see exactly what's gonna happen in your day. But when you make a plan, do you generally follow it? Is that an agree or a disagree? Yes or no? Okay, those are the boundary questions. And now we get to confidence. Confidence is about believing in yourself so that you can take action without hesitation. So confidence, C here, C1. I think of myself as a generally organized and productive person. Would you say that about yourself? Yes or no, agree or disagree? C2, I feel little to no anxiety when approaching my tasks. And again, this is most of the time. If every once in a while you get a task that throws you off, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about generally, do you get to work and you feel little to no anxiety? You're like, okay, I can handle this. Yes, no, agree, disagree. C3, I am able to quickly ready myself and my workspace to get things done. Now, this is going to vary upon where you work and what your workspace is in any, in any given context of your day. But when you have to get to work on some tasks, are you able to get yourself ready? Yourself and whatever you need to get the job done or get the work done, right? Is that an agree or a disagree? C4, I trust myself and don't often second guess my choices. Is that a yes or a no? Are you someone who generally makes a decision and sticks with it? Uh, or are you somebody who makes a choice but then second guess and maybe flip flops and changes your mind a bunch? Agree or disagree? Yes or no? C5, I have an easy time making decisions. Do you feel like making decisions are easy for you? Maybe you have your own little strategy for how you make a decision. Maybe you make a list. Maybe you talk to people to discuss it. But generally, when it comes to making decisions, you know how to make a decision, right? Yes or no? Agree or disagree? Now, C6. When I am nervous about a project, I settle myself and begin to take action to build positive momentum as quickly as possible. So in those instances, when you do feel anticipation or this nervousness about something you're working on, do you have strategies to calm yourself down, right? And to help you get started on the work so that you can build that momentum to get more done? Is that something you do? Yes or no? Agree or disagree? C7. I am confident that I am a smart and capable person. Are you? Is that how you feel about yourself? I hope so. Agree or disagree. C8, I know I am worthy to achieve the goals I set for myself, even when they are outside of my comfort zone. So how do you feel about your goals? Do you feel like you can set, you know, bigger goals or more competitive goals with yourself and know that you deserve it? Right? Even if it's not something that you feel like you should be setting a goal for, agree or disagree. C9, I know that my results in life come from the actions I do or do not take. Is that how you feel about your life? 
right, that your results are either actions you do take and you get results or actions you don't take and the results that come from that. Do you agree with that statement or not? And C10, I take responsibility for myself, my life, and how I spend my time. Do you take responsibility for yourself or do you find that you're always maybe talking about or dwelling on, oh, this person did this and I had no control or, you know, this is the, this is whatever my boss says, he controls my work day or else, you know, I don't have a good work day unless he <laughs> is giving me an easy work day, right? Do you see yourself as the one in control and with full responsibility or do you see others as the catalyst, right? And the reason why things happen and therefore they are responsible for what happens in your life. Agree or disagree? Okay, that's confidence. And now we get to our final category, which is energy. And this is about cultivating and managing the energy necessary to achieve your goals. Okay, energy E here. E1, I always have enough energy to complete the essential tasks I plan for a day. Okay, again, maybe you don't have enough energy for everything, but the most essential things you have the energy for, right? You feel like you're up to it. Agree or disagree? E2, I usually get a restful night's sleep. Again, sometimes we have bouts of, of time where we're not sleeping well, but usually you're someone who gets a restful night's sleep. Agree or disagree? E3, I make a habit of taking steps to ensure my energy is at its highest as often as possible. So do you do things to actually increase your energy or to replenish your energy when you feel like it might be dipping? E4, I have a regular self-care routine. Yes or no? Agree or disagree? Do you have that routine? E5, my self-care routine includes healthy living habits regarding nutrition, mental health, and movement. Right? So if you feel like you don't really have a self-care routine, then obviously the answer to this one is also going to be a disagree. But if you do have a self-care routine, are you including things like nutrition, mental health, and movement? Agree or disagree? E6, I don't often waste mental energy thinking about and processing things that are outside of my immediate control. Right? Are you someone who doesn't think about the things that they can't control? Right? Maybe you think about it a little bit, but you put it out of your mind, right? Or are you someone who constantly dwells on things that you really can't take action on, right? Are you wasting men mental energy worrying about things that haven't happened yet? Is that something that you do often? And I will say more often than not. So agree or disagree. E7, when I'm feeling low, I have a routine to lift my spirits. So do you intentionally take action to lift your spirits when you're feeling low. Agree or disagree? E8, my morning routine successfully prepares me mentally and physically for a good day. Okay, so the thing that you do in the morning, and sometimes people think they don't have a morning routine, but generally we do all have a morning routine. We all wake up <laughs> at some point and take a set of actions. So what you do in that first, let's say, hour after you wake up, do you feel like it prepares you for the day, right? Mentally and physically. Agree or disagree. And E9, my workday routine keeps me feeling motivated, organized, and in control of my work. So your process for your workday, no matter what kind of work you do, right? Maybe your work, you're a student, maybe you work at home, maybe you work at a job, or maybe you work a job from home, right? Whatever that is for you. Does that routine keep you feeling motivated, organized, and in control of the tasks that, you, that you're assigned to or that you've assigned yourself? Okay, and final question here, E10, my evening routine successfully prepares me for the next morning and a good night's sleep. So whether or not you think you have an intentional evening routine, do you take steps in the evening to prepare yourself for the next morning and of course, a restful night's sleep? Is that an agree? or disagree. Okay. So that was the question portion of the assessment. Now let's get into scoring your assessment and talking a little bit more about what goes into the assessment and how it identifies your productivity 
issues. Okay, so determining the root of the productivity problem. As I was evaluating common productivity issues, I began to notice that there are a set of skills at the core of determining productivity success in individuals. The more I dug into these skills, I was able to discern seven specific core competencies that could be developed in order to increase overall productivity. Those core competencies play a major role across multiple different measures or categories and work together to form a solid foundation for a productive lifestyle. The seven core productivity competencies are number one, habits. So how you react to specific cues in your day and the resulting routines you develop all relate to habits. Two is focus, the ability to concentrate on the task at hand until it's complete. Three is prioritization, the ability to determine which tasks and choices are most important. Competency four is expectations, the act of or ability to clearly anticipate the probability that something will occur. Five is strategy, understanding how to execute the practical methods of time and task management. Six is mindset, your deep-seated beliefs about yourself and the way the world works. And seven is self-care, the act of and ability to attend to one's physical and mental well-being. So those are the core productivity competencies. So when it comes to scoring your assessment, the basis of each of the questions that you answered in the productivity assessment reflects one of these core competencies. Your agreement with a statement reflects back to a positive development in a specific core competency. And of course, your disagreement points to an area where the core competency needs more development. In just a moment, we are going to walk through the rubric for scoring your assessment on the basis of these core competencies. As we walk through the scoring rubric, keep in mind that with seven competencies across 50 questions, there isn't an even breakdown of questions to competencies. Some competencies have more nuance than others, and therefore, more questions are devoted to them in order to get as thorough a view of your development in each. Okay, so when we get to the totals of the questions that relate to the core competencies, habits has a, has a total of eight questions, focus has nine questions, prioritization has five, expectations also has five, strategy has eight total questions, mindset has 11, and self-care has four. That means that mindset is the most nuanced, right, of all of these competencies. There's a lot more that goes into your mindset, right, than, for example, self-care. Self-care is much more straightforward, so there's only four total questions that relate to that, right? So those are the question totals that we're going to be working through. Now, I'm going to ask you to, in your workbook, you're gonna highlight the questions that you disagreed with on the scoring rubric page of your assessment workbook. So you're gonna see the categories again, and the letters and numbers, so P1, P2, et cetera, all of those, right? And they are going to have a word next to them for which core competency they relate to. So on the scoring rubric, I want you to highlight the ones you disagreed with. So P1 was strategy. Highlight that if you disagreed with that statement. P2 relates to strategy. Again, you only highlight that on the rubric if it was a disagree. P3 strategy, P4 was also strategy, P5 strategy, P6 relates to focus, P7 mindset, P8 prioritization, P9 also prioritization, and P10 habits. So for those 10 questions, you're only highlighting the ones that you disagreed with the statement. Then time management, same thing. T1 was mindset, T2 strategy, T3 prioritization, T4 also strategy, T5 was strategy, T6 expectations, T7 expectations, T8 prioritization, T9 prioritization, and T10 expectations. You're only gonna highlight the questions on the rubric that you disagreed with. Boundaries, B1, focus, B2, expectations, B3, focus, B4, focus, B5, habits, B6, focus, B7, expectations, B8, focus, B9, self-care, B10, focus. Only highlight on the rubric 
the question that you disagreed with, the questions that you disagreed with. Confidence, C1, mindset, C2, mindset, C3, focus, C4, mindset, C5, mindset, C6, mindset, C7, mindset, C8, mindset, C9, mindset, C10, mindset, okay? And finally, we get to energy. Again, only highlighting the numbers that we disagreed with. E1, self-care, E2, self-care, E C. I'm sorry, E3, self-care, E4, habits, E5, habits, E6, focus, E7, habits, E8, habits, E9, habits, E10, habits. Okay. Now, how we're actually going to score this. You're going to come up with totals for the number of total questions for each competency that you disagreed with. So for habits, how many questions did you disagree with out of the eight total? And then what you're going to do is divide that number of disagree by the total number of questions to come up with a rate. Okay. And so an example of this would be, let's say for habits, you disagreed with two questions out of eight. That's just an example. Then two divided by eight is 0.25. And that would mean the rate is 25%, right? The next line here is focus. It has nine total questions. So let's say, for example, you said no or disagree to three questions out of the nine. That means three divided by nine is 0.33 or 33%. Of course, please use a calculator. I did not come up with these <laughs> off, my, off the top of my head. Um, but if you need a calculator, absolutely do it. So habits your total disagrees out of eight and the percentage focus. That's a total of nine questions. How many out of nine did you disagree with? And then what is the percentage of disagreement? Prioritization, how many out of five? And what's the percent? Expectations, how many disagrees out of five? And again, the percent. Strategy, how many disagrees out of eight total questions? And the percent. Mindset, how many total disagrees out of 11 and the percentage? And then self-care, how many total disagrees out of four? And then the percentage, right? So obviously in this situation, the higher the percentage rate, the more you struggle with that specific competency, right? So higher percentages are going to show you that you're struggling more in those competency areas. Okay. So now that we've scored our assessment, let's go ahead and put together a development action plan, right? How we can actually get to work fixing <laughs> these things, right? And not just fixing as though there's something wrong, but really improving areas because you probably um, had many areas on these core competencies that need some development, right? So let me explain to you the strategy that I recommend you use in order to tackle improving these areas. So taking action on what you've learned. Once you know the percentage rate of development for each core competency, you can begin to take action improving your development in any areas that you're not satisfied with. So I recommend starting with the competency that is the highest percentage of disagrees, right? So evaluating the questions you disagreed with that relate to the competency and choosing no more than three questions to work on improving in a time, right? So go ahead go ahead and work through the percentages for each of those disagrees, right? The higher the percentage, the more it's a problem area. So choose, I would recommend you choose the highest percentage competency, right? To be the first competency you work on. And what I would do is I would then go and I would refer back to the questions that related to that competency, specifically the ones that you disagreed with and choose three that you're interested in working on at one time. That is how I recommend you proceed with developing, right? So literally take the questions that you disagree with and dissect them to understand what you actually need to work on to improve yourself, right? Because that's the actual element that you need to switch from disagree to an agree, right? By actually spending time and effort improving yourself in that area. 
So this assessment is for your development. Remember, there is no ideal like pass fail score for this assessment. It's up to you to determine the areas that you're not satisfied with and improve upon them as you feel is necessary. And you're only competing against yourself for a more productive and successful life. Remember that you're not competing against anyone else. This is all within your own life, right? And your own feeling of productivity and and outcomes in your life, right? So this is all about you and your own personal development. So this is a marathon, not a sprint. So we need to be in this for the long haul of personal development. There are really no overnight results, right? So now that you know where you struggle, don't expect an overnight result, right? It's You're going to be working on these things over and over until you you know, make them your dominant default pattern of productivity, right? Now, let's talk about the Productivity Assessment Resource Guide. I've built out a complete resource guide with on-demand masterclasses for each productivity competency. So each class provides research and insight into the competency itself, plus strategic strategies for each question of the assessment, right? So I want you to stick around a little bit longer and I'm gonna talk about how you can get instant access to this amazing resource designed to be an easy button for you to implement changes and improve your productivity faster than trial and error on your own. So what do you think? Are you surprised by your results or did they confirm what you thought? Like I said, a lot of people think that their productivity issues are one thing and then they go through the assessment and then they realize it was something else altogether. So I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments, in um, an email or in a DM. You can DM me at Miss Trenchcoat. Let me know what you thought of your results. I absolutely want to hear from you. Okay, so are you ready for more? Because like I said, I've got this on-demand resource that is ready for you to jump in and really start breaking down this assessment and improving your productivity with research-backed strategies and methods. And it's called the Productivity Assessment Resource Guide. It's your on-demand tool for improving any area of productivity in three easy steps. Step one. And here's, these are screenshots that I've taken from inside the resource guide. Step one is that you need to take the assessment and score yourself in the workbook, which hopefully at this point you've done, right? But it is there for you on the resource page for you to watch and rewatch and go through this assessment because this isn't something I, I recommend people do once. I would recommend probably that you go through this maybe twice a year, right? in order to kind of check in on yourself and see how your productivity is doing, right? So step one is actually take the assessment and score yourself in the workbook. Step two is to identify that first core productivity competency that you want to improve and watch the masterclass for it, right? Like I said, there are seven total masterclasses, habits, focus, understanding priorities, managing expectations, and then strategy of time and task management, mindset matters, and self-care, right? So all seven of the core competencies have their own dedicated masterclass. And then step three is to use the question selection tool below to get quick strategy tips and reference. So on the page, there is a breakdown of every single one of the categories for the questions, and each of the questions are actually listed out. And then what you can do is actually, and I don't, I can't actually interact with this because it's just a screenshot, but you can open up that plus sign and a drop down will tell you what the core competency is for that question. And it gives you like the quick strategy solution for reference for how to start making progress and changing that disagree to an agree, right? For each of those questions. So there's, there are the 10 questions for planning and time management, and boundaries, and confidence, and energy. And that's just really meant to be um, this place so that you don't have to keep going back to the masterclasses. They're wonderful, but they're very info rich. And sometimes you just want a quick reference, like uh, what did Alexa say to do with E7, right? (laughs) It's all in there. Step three of that productivity assessment resource guide. So how to get started with the resource guide right now, I'm sure Many of you are thinking, Alexis, I need this. Like, I need this right now. This is the easy button to figuring it all out with my productivity and actually beginning to take action in the right direction that's really going to help you see results and changes in your time and task and energy management. Well, it's totally ready for you. The Productivity Assessment Resource Guide is completely ready for you to use right now on demand inside 
the Charmed Life Mastermind. So if you're not familiar with my mastermind, the Charmed Life Mastermind is an accountability and personal development coaching membership community for ambitious women that are designing their best lives. So what you get in this mastermind, you get three major things inside this mastermind. You get live coaching and learning, you get on-demand tools and resources, and you get a community accountability and support, right? Because this is an online membership community, right? We have a website, we have a Slack, we've got resources galore, including the Productivity Assessment Resource Guide. If you are interested in the mastermind, right, these are things that you get. Now, let's talk a little bit about the finer details of what's included with your membership, because those are pretty vague statements, right, before. This is generally what you get. Three live calls per month. We do a masterclass every month, a new masterclass on a new productivity topic every month. I host an office hours call that's generally themed, but it's an opportunity for you to come to get coaching or questions answered from me live and a CEO power hour, which is our monthly planning process. And I generally teach a lesson to online business owners as well to help them plan for their business as well as their life. We also do master classes and resource library, right? We also have, I should say, a master class and resource library. I've been teaching this or leading this mastermind now for over two years. So we have over 28 on-demand classes and another 100 plus tools that are on-demand ready for you to use. Of course, the Productivity Assessment Resource Guide we already talked about is in there. We also do a book of the month and we have a whole library of past book summaries, right? From other productivity planning, personal development books we've read on a variety of different topics. We have monthly productivity planning and personal development challenges. Many times other mastermind sisters will actually lead these, um, but we do these monthly challenges from time to time as well, which are awesome to help kind of boost our motivation and keep us accountable. You also have access to our private Slack group for daily accountability, coaching, and extra content. So if you're not familiar, Slack is kind of like a chat forum that's used by different groups or businesses within workplaces, and it's essentially an app that you can download and you can access our specific channel or you know our specific workplace within Slack. And there's multiple different channels, like multiple different forums of different topics. And there, actually, every day, Monday through Friday, I post different sorts of accountability posts to help you stay on track with what your goals are and to help you, you know, learn to plan better and to, you know, encourage you to be more productive and to overcome any obstacles that you have during your week. So we do amazing things over in the private Slack, and that's really where we just are constantly chatting on demand. You also get instant access to everything included in the mastermind as soon as you join. No content is dripped, which is really something that makes the mastermind much different than other communities online. I don't hold anything back. You get everything. (laughs) And I record everything and put all the replays up. So you get everything, whether or not you can come live or you have to watch the replays. Every replay is there. It's a plethora of information that is really at your fingertips to go and explore as much as you'd like. And last but not least, I have a no questions asked cancellation policy. I do not make it hard for anyone to cancel. I don't try to like reel you in and keep you there. If you are not happy, right, you can let me know or you can cancel your subscription yourself in your account in the Charm Shop and you won't be um, charged for any further payments for your subscription. Okay, so next, let's talk about who's inside the mastermind. Our mastermind is filled with ambitious, high-vibe, planner-loving ladies working to create their charmed lives through research-backed strategy, tools, and accountability. So does that sound like a group of ladies you would like to be masterminding with? I mean, I definitely do. And something I want to remind you guys is that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And very often, we don't have enough people in our daily lives that really help to uplift, inspire, and advance us, which is why I created this mastermind community to begin with. I felt like I needed 
a mastermind of like-minded women who were interested in the same things that I was interested in, people who could be my inner circle, that I could share my productivity you know, strategies and new things I was learning and implementing and new tools I was making for myself. I wanted to have a place to share, right? with other women to help empower and motivate and inspire them to make their lives the best that they could be, right? And so that is why I ended up creating this mastermind. And I am as much a member as I am like the host of the mastermind as well, right? So keep that in mind. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. A lot of time we don't get enough of those wonderful, awesome people in our day-to-day life. And so Sometimes we have to go to another community and, and an online community where there's, you know, so many more people online that are sharing those same, you know, thoughts and struggles and, you know, obsessions about planning and productivity as you are, right? And that's what we all gather right inside of the Charmed Life Mastermind. So if you're thinking, is this mastermind right for you? Let me give you a little bit of parameters here. So if you enjoy my content, you're drawn to the topics of productivity and planning, and you have goals that you want to achieve. Maybe you've never even set goals before, but like you want to, like you feel like you want more from your life, then guess what? The mastermind is for you. If you believe in the power of personal development and you would love to like read and learn more about a variety of topics, but you don't often feel like you have the time to sit down and read like an entire like 300 page book at a time, then the mastermind is for you because I take all of that um, information from different books and things like that and I put them together into classes and resources that make it much easier to digest content. If you consume a lot of content out there online, maybe you're on YouTube, on podcasts, on Instagram, on TikTok, right? But you don't find yourself making strategic changes based on what you're learning, and you wish that you had someone who could make it easy for you to act and remain accountable, then the mastermind is also for you. That is the essential, you know, element of what we do is that I'm making things easier for you. I'm making productivity easier, strategy easier. I'm making it easier for you to be accountable and to act right? Sometimes we learn so much, but we don't put what we learn into action, right? And acting on new information, right, is what we are about in the mastermind. And finally, if you wish you had a group of girlfriends who were also as interested in planning and personal development as you, the mastermind is for you. Like I said, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you don't have enough awesome people in your life who are interested in productivity and planning and who are uplifting you and, and inspiring you every day and keeping you accountable and supporting you and being your cheerleader, we will be that for you 100%. So the Charmed Life Mastermind is currently open for enrollment, but enrollment is only going to be open for a short period of time. In the past, I've kept the mastermind open 24 seven, 365. But this year I've decided that I'm going to have specific periods of time where I will do an open enrollment period and then I will close enrollment. So right now we are in our, our open enrollment period, right? And once this period is over, then you'll have to wait and get onto the wait list, okay? So if you're watching this as it goes live, of course, we are live with an open enrollment. But if you're watching this at some time in the future, just know it's not always open. So if you follow the links that I have below, and I'll talk about that in a moment, to sign up, and you see that you're, you've missed open enrollment, no problem, there's a wait list that you can get on, right? So that is how I'm running the mastermind now. And I'm doing that this way this year, really to help control the flow of people into the group so that I can properly onboard people, right? So that I can make sure that people are getting what they need when they when they enroll. And so when I have an open enrollment like this, I'm really able to make sure that I'm onboarding people who are new appropriately and making sure people are getting signed in and things like that, right? So open enrollment is now going on if you're watching this as it goes live, right? But even if it's not, you can still get onto the wait list, right? So let's talk about how to enroll right now. So the link below this video is going to take you to a sales page for the mastermind with even more information and details of this experience. On that page, you will see buttons that say enroll now, right? And you can actually click those buttons and you will view the listing for the membership subscription in my shop. All you have to do is add that membership subscription to your cart and check out using either a credit card or PayPal. There are actually two ways that you can pay. You can pay through PayPal or you can use a credit card through, I think an application called Stripe (laughs) is on 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 my shop. 
I recommend not adding anything else to your cart at this time when you're doing this checkout, just in case, because technology can be weird sometimes. And just know that coupon codes will not be accepted with this offer, okay? So if you have any other coupon codes, they don't apply to the mastermind. So after your payment is processed, you'll be redirected back to my shop where you should see somewhere on the page, there's a link for downloading your PDF welcome letter, right? And depending on if you chose the annual membership subscription or not, you will also get downloads for the special bonus of the master planner, right? So if you miss the redirect back to the shop, don't worry, you will be emailed something that looks like a receipt or an invoice for your purchase and inside the body of that email, are links to your downloads. The welcome letter PDF includes a link to register for the course website to get immediate access to the content and also to join the Slack accountability community. So just because you checked out doesn't mean you have access yet. You still need to use that welcome letter to get yourself registered for a private membership community, okay? So that's a very important step. You'll be able to join the membership community. You'll be able to join the Slack from that welcome letter PDF. So don't, don't forget about that. And if you have any issues or questions throughout any part of this process, feel free to email me, alexis at strangecharm.com. I'm very good at keeping an eye on my email. And if anyone has you know problems going through the enrollment, I am there to help you, no problem. Now, if you're watching this workshop at some point in the future and enrollment is not currently open for the mastermind, the sales page is going to basically change a little bit. It's gonna include buttons that say join the wait list instead of enroll now, right? So all you have to do is click one of those buttons and you can add your information to the wait list. And the next time I open enrollment or I have spots that become available, I will email you so that you are among the first to know about it and can enroll as soon as possible, right? So I can't wait for you to become my next new mastermind sister. And I know the rest of the ladies are also excited to meet you as well. So thank you so much for taking the productivity assessment. If you have any questions about the assessment and need my help, again, leave me a comment below the video or send me an email or even a DM on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat, and I'd be glad to help. I hope that this has been a really informative experience for you, and I can't wait to see you inside of the Charmed Life Mastermind. Bye-bye.